Okay, so the second recording, uh, story of Solomon Cain, which is linked directly to the game and uh, the scenarios which are linked to that game by Mythic Games. Uh, today, I'm going to be reading The Right Hand of Doom. And this is a shorter story, uh, so it shouldn't take as long. And hopefully the sound is a bit louder and a bit more clearer uh, than it was for the last uh, audio book, I guess is the best way to say it, or audio story. Okay, so we're going to move on to the right hand of doom for the next one. The right hand of doom. And he hangs at dawn. <laughs> the speaker smote his thigh resoundingly and laughed in a high-pitched grating voice. He glanced boastfully at his hearers and gulped the wine which stood at his elbow. The fire leaped and flickered in the taproom fireplace and no one answered him. Roger Simeon, the necromancer, sneered the grating voice, a dealer in a diabolic arts and worker of black magic. My word, all his foul power could not save him when the, witch, uh, when the king's soldiers surrounded his cave and took him prisoner. He fled when the people began to fling cobblestones at his windows and thought to hide himself and escape to France. Ha <laughs> ha, his escape shall be at the end of a noose. A good day's work, say I. He tossed a small bag on the table where it clinked musically. The price of a magician's life, he boasted. What say you, my sour friend? The lass was addressed to a tall, silent man who sat near the fire. This man, gaunt, powerful and somberly dressed, turned his darkly pallid face towards the speaker and fixed him with a pair of deep, icy eyes. I say, said he in a low, powerful voice, that you have this day done a damnable deed your necromancer was worthy of death belike but he trusted you naming you his one friend and you betrayed him for a few filthy coins methinks you will meet him in hell some day the first speaker a short stocky and evil-faced fellow opened his mouth as if for an angry retort and then hesitated the icy he eyes held his for an instant then the tall man rose with a small smooth cat-like motion and strode from the tap room in long, springy strides. Who is yon? asked the boaster resentfully. Who is he to uphold magicians against honest men? By God, he is lucky to cross words with John Redley and keep his heart in bosom. The tavern keeper leaned forward to secure an ember for his long stemmed pipe and answered dryly. And you be lucky too, John, for keeping that mouth shut. That be Solomon Cain, the Puritan, a man dangerouser than a wolf. Redley grumbled beneath his breath, muttered an oath, and sullenly replaced the money bag in his belt. Are you staying here tonight? I, Redley answered suddenly. Rather I stay to watch Simeon hang in Tockerton tomorrow, but I'm London bound at dawn. The tavern keeper filled their goblets. Here's to Simeon's soul. God have your mercy on the wretch. And may he fail in the vengeance he swore to take on you. John Redley started, swore and laughed with reckless bravado. The laughter rose emptied, emptily and broke on a false note. Somlin came suddenly and sat up, woke and sat up in bed. He was a light sleeper, as becomes a man who habitually carries his life in his hand. And somewhere in the house had sounded a noise which had roused him. He listened. Outside, as he could see through the shutters, the world was whitening with the first tints of dawn. Suddenly the sound came again, faintly. It was as if a cat were clawing its way up the wall, outside. Cain listened, and then came a sound as if someone were fumbling at the shutters. The Puritan rose, and sword in hand, crossed the room suddenly, and flung them open. The world lay sleeping into his gaze. A late moon hovered over the western horizon. No marauder lurked outside the window. He leaned out, gazing at the window of the chamber next his. The shutters were open. Cain closed his shutters and crossed to his door, went out into the corridor. He was acting on impulse as he usually did. These were wild times. This tavern was some miles from the nearest town, Tockerton. Bandits were common. Someone or something had entered the chamber next his, and its sleeping occupant might be in danger. 
Kate did not halt to weigh pros and cons, but went straight to the chamber door and opened it. The window was wide open and the light streamed in, illuminating the room, yet it made, seem, made it seem to swim in a ghostly mist. A short, evil-visaged man snored on the bed, and him Kane recognised as John Redley, the man who had betrayed the necromancer or the soldiers. Then his gaze was drawn to the window. On the sill squatted what looked like a huge spider. As, and as Cain watched, it dropped to the floor and began to crawl towards the bed. The thing was broad and hairy and dark, and Cain noted that it had left a stain on the window sill. It moved on five thick and curiously jointed legs and altogether had such an eerie appearance about it that Cain was spellbound for the moment. Now it had reached Redley's bed and clambered up the bedstead in a strange, clumsy sort of manner. Now it poised directly over the sleeping man, clinging to the bedstead, and Cain started forward with a shout of warning. That instantly Redley woke and looked up. His eyes flared wide. A terrible scream broke from his lips, and simultaneously the spider thing dropped, landing full on his neck. And even as Cain reached the bed, he saw the legs lock and heard the splintering of John Redley's neck's bones. The man stiffened and lay still, his head lolling grotesquely on his broken neck, and the thing dropped from him and lay limply on the bed. Cain bent over the grim spectacle, scarcely believing his eyes, for the thing which had opened the shutters, crawled across the floor and murdered John Redley in his bed, was a human hand. Now it, laid fla now it lay flaccid and lifeless, and Cain gingerly thrust his rapier point through it and lifted it to his eyes. The hand was that of a large man, apparently, for it was broad and thick, with heavy fingers, and almost covered by a matted growth of ape-like hair. It had been severed at the wrist and was caked with blood. A thin silver ring was on the second finger, a curious ornament made in the form of a coiling serpent. Cain stood gazing at the hideous relic as the tavern keeper entered, clad in his nightshirt, candle in one hand and blunderbuss in the other. What's this? he roared as his eyes fell on the corpse on the bed. Then he saw what Cain held spitted on his sword, and his face went white. As if drawn by an irresistible urge, he came closer. His eyes bulged. Then he reeled back and sank into a chair. So pale Cain thought he was going to swoon. God's name, sir, he grasped. Let that thing not live. There be a fire in the tap room, sir. Cain came into Tockertown before the morning had waned. At the outskirts of the village, he met a glorious youth who hailed him. Sir, like all honest men, you will be pleased, pleasure to know that Roger Simeon, the black magician, was hanged this dawn just as the sun came up. And was his passing manly? asked Cain somberly. Aye, sir, he flinched not, but a weird deed it was. Look ye, sir, Roger Simeon went to the gallows, but with one hand to his arms. And how came about that? Last night, sir, as he sat in his cell like a great black spider, he called one of his guards, and asking for a fav last favour, bade the soldier strike off his right hand. The man would not do it at first, but he feared Roger's curse, and at last he took his sword and smote off the hand at the wrist. Then Simeon, taking it in his left hand, flung it far through the bars of his window cell, uttering many strange and foul words of magic. The guards were so sore afraid, but Roger offered not to harm them, saying he hated only John Redley that betrayed him. And he bound the stump of his arm to stop the blood, and all the rest of the night he sat as a man in a trance. And at times he mumbled to himself as a man that unknowing talks to himself. And to the right, he would whisper, and bear to the left, and on and Oh, sir, twas grisly to hear him, they say, and to see him crouching over his bloody stump of his arm. And as dawn was grey, they came and took him forth to the gallows, and as they placed the noose around his neck, suddenly writhed and strained as with effort. And the muscles in his right arm, which lacked the hand, bulged and creaked as though he were breaking some mortal's neck. Then as the guards sprang to seize him, he ceased and began to laugh. And terrible and hideous his laughter bellowed out until the noose broke it short 
and a young black and silent in the red eye of the rising sun. Solomon Cain was silent, for he was thinking of a f the fearful terror which had twisted John Redley's features in that last swift moment of awakening and life, ere doom struck. And a dim picture rose in his mind, that of a hairy severed hand, clawing on its fingers like a giant spider, blindly through the dark night time forests to scale a wall and fumble open a pair of bedroom strutters. Here his vision stopped, recoiling from the continuance of that dark and bloody drama. What terrible fires of hate have blazed in the soul of the doomed necromancer, and what hideous powers has his been? To, se to so send that bloody hand groping on its mission, guided by the magic and will of that burning brain. Yet to make sure, Solomon asked, and was the hand ever found? Nay, sir, men found the place where it had fallen, where it was thrown from the cell, but it was gone, and a trail of red lead into the forest. Doubtless a wolf devoured it. Doubtless, answered Solomon Cain. And were Simeon's hands great and hairy with a ring on the second finger of the right hand? Aye, sir, a silver ring coiled like unto a snake. Okay, so a shorter story, um, and uh, not as much to talk about, obviously, um, but quite a, a, an awesome little story as well um, about this necromancer who um, was captured and imprisoned by, um, by, we don't really know if it's a friend or, it sounds like it was a friend because uh, Solomon Cain said that uh, he called you a friend, uh, his only friend, and you betrayed him. Um, uh, this John Ridley, Redley, sorry. Uh, so this is John Redley. I've just picked up a villager miniature, actually, um, which I think would be fine. It looks a bit like John Redley, I would imagine it would be. Um, and we start with Solomon Cain, obviously, getting uh, payment for uh, him, which we assume Solomon Cain captured this necromancer. Now, this, I don't know, this game might well be um, set uh, in Solomon Cain capturing the necromancer, possibly. And then... Um, if he does capture him and, and gets paid by John Redley, uh, then we know that it, we have an inn scene perhaps because it talks about the innkeeper here or the tavern owner. And then uh, obviously eventually uh, we get the right hand of doom coming into uh, John Redley's bedroom and uh, killing him, strangling him, um, being powered and effectively controlled by the necromancer, um, Sol um, Simeon. So... Yeah, there's quite a lot they can go into this, to be honest. Um, it depends on where they set the scene. Uh, I presume we'll have the story scene, of course, uh, which is in the tavern, um, going upstairs, uh, the hand coming across. And again, just like um, with all the stories, it could follow a different route. So but perhaps um, Solomon Cain could destroy the right hand of Doom, uh, therefore saving John Redley, uh, which would be quite a change to the story and, and would, would certainly work. Um it would be quite cool if you are playing the part of Solomon Cain uh, on the, on this kind of bounty, as it were, uh, going to capture uh, Simeon, the necromancer, um, as part of your uh, Puritan ways, as it were, because he's a necromancer, obviously. Um, but again, Solomon Cain's always troubled and always torn between this 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 idea of the righteous and and and, um, and the honourable, and it definitely seems like uh, readily. Uh, tricked him it sounded like he he betrayed his, his, this this friend um so it definitely seems like that's the part so yeah a this is the uh i think if you if you back the early bo early bird of solomon kane you uh, got this free otherwise it was a a relatively cheap add-on as an expansion and uh, i'll be moving on to rattle of bones i believe as the next story uh, so that will be in uh, the third episode so I hope you enjoyed it. The Right Hand of Doom. Another great story. These are fantastic little stories. Um, and they're going to play so well into uh, the game and how it plays, I'm sure. And until next time.